Uh, thanks, Dr. Bakshi, for the nice introduction and making the platform ready for radiation. Now, what we understood that, uh, that and heard that about the toxicities of radiation and the uh, complication rates of radiations. Now, when we talk about prostate cancer, prostate cancer, see, it is not only the surgery is now the alternative of SBRT, but IMRT and proton also is there. So we are going to debate on surgery and other aspects also and compare with, uh, with our SBRT. Now, when you talk about SBRT, there are some notions, myths that need to be broken. And if you are able to break that, then I think the debate is done. Now, SBRT is not the standard of care and need to consider if surgery is not possible. No randomized data between surgery and SBRT and uh, surgery should always be considered as a standard of care. SBRT, uh, um, after SBRT, surgery is difficult. And, uh, and salvage RT is always, uh, always better. So we should always consider surgery as the first option. SBRT is not possible in high-risk group, and in low-risk group, no need for treatment because surveillance is an option in that, those cases. And age is not a criteria for robotic surgery. Now it is so good that we can do as, uh, radio, uh, robotic surgery in a patient who are elderly more than 70, 80. So that is not a criteria. And there are some questions that need to be answered. Uh, which one is better, IMRT or SPRT? That is uh, among the radiations. What is the evidences and the long-term toxicities and which are the type of SPRT which is more important? And uh, do cyber knife is costlier than the surgery? So we are going to just take these uh, notions first. There is enough data on SPRT and hypo fraction radiations and I'm going to show the data. There are six thousand patients with more than five years follow-up data, and I'm going to show that. There is a randomized data between IMRT and SBRT, which has shown that SBRT is better than the IMRT. And there is no randomized data between surgery and, uh, and radio surgery. And it is the onus for the surgeons, because the patient comes to the surgeons first, to find out that we, whether we are able to do a randomized data. Till that, we have a matched pair data till 10 years follow-up, where radiation and surgery is similar outcome. And, uh, and recurrence after SBRT is 5 to 7 percent at 10 years, which is too low to subject all the patients to surgery. In fact, after the surgery also, the risk of recurrence is 2 to 5 percent, which is almost similar. So it is not that after radiation, the risk of recurrence is high. It is similar uh, than uh, compared to surgery, and I'm going to show the data as for that. Elderly patients have more comorbidities and they have additional risk of anesthesia and the surgery and SBRT may be a safer option in those group of patients. And we know that prostate cancer is a patient, uh, the disease of elderly people. So that is a group of patients where SBRT may be better than surgery. This is a very old paper and uh, uh, Christopher King of 1,000 odd patients with five years follow-up. And if you see the biochemical control at five years is 95%. And uh, the risk of risk, risk um, acute toxicity, grade three and more toxicity, is less than three percent. So that actually has the cornerstone to for the SBRT in prostate cancers. Now there is a randomized data, phase three randomized data between IMRT and and SBRT, and uh, which has is a non inferiority study, which has shown there is no difference in them. Can you see the plot? Which is this completely hugging with each other? between the IMRT arm and SBRT arm, and there's no difference in terms of biochemical failures. And in terms of toxicity, there is not much toxicity, but if you see, there's a sm small pick in the SBRT arm uh, compared to the IMRT arm, and it showed that maybe the uh, echo toxicity may be a little more with SBRT, which another study, PACE B study, which more number of patients, 700 odd patients, 800, uh, 400 in each group, has randomized data which has shown there's no difference in terms of uh, toxicities, and when we see the, the, the quality of life parameters, there is no difference in terms of GI toxicities or gastrointestinal toxicities uh, compared to SBRT and IMRT. So SBRT and IMRT, there's no difference in terms of outcome, but if you see the number of days of treatment and the compliance and the patient comfort is much, much better with SBRT compared to, uh, to IMRT. This is a 6,000 patients prospective database and a systematic review of SPRT, which has shown 
that at five years, biochemical control is 95%, seven years is 94%. And if you see the GI toxicity, it is 2%. And GU toxicity is only 1.1%. With a 6,000 odd patients with seven years follow-up, if this is a, we cannot be better than that. And, and, the, and so the toxicity profiles may be much more, much more favorable to SBRT and compared to it is an outpatient process and we don't need to go for, go for any kind of operations in that case. Now, in this same, same meta-analysis, it has shown that if we increase the dose, biochemical control actually improves. With SBRT, as we are able to give higher dose, so the chance of biochemical control is higher. And there is a dose escalation study as well, which has shown that if we increase the dose from 37.5 to 40 grain, five fractions, there is a chance of biochemical control higher. So SBRT do have an edge in terms of preserving the biochemical failure as well in, uh, compared to SBRT. Now, about this long-term data of 2,000 odd patients with seven years median follow-up of low risk and intermediate risk prostate cancers treated with, uh, with, uh, with SBRT. And if you see, 70% of the patients were treated with cyber knife in this cohort, 30% are LA-based SBRT, and 7.25 gray uh, per fraction means 37.25 gray uh, total dose was given. 50% of the patients were alternate day treatment, 50% are daily treatment. And if you see the outcome at seven years, recurrence is 4.5% only at seven years follow-up, and that is too low for, uh, to have a uh, surgical intervention for all the patients. So the risk, what we are talking, is much less when we see a prospective randomized data uh, uh, with prostate cancer with long-term follow-up. Now, you see the toxicity in, in this cohort. Maximum at seven years, GU toxicity is 2.4%, and GI toxicity is 0.4%. See, that is too low for any kind of interventions, uh, and, and, and when we compare it as an outpatient process, and uh, patients do not have any kind of complications. Now, very, very interesting comparing toxicities of different trials, RP, conventional fractions and radiations, hyperfraction radiations, and, and cyber knife, which has shown that in linac based SBRT, if you see the toxicity is around 4 to 5%. Whereas, when you see the robotic radiosurgery, it is 2.4%. So, when you compare the GU and GI toxicity of all the modalities what we have for prostate, including radical prostatectomy, best toxicity profile is with robotic radiosurgery compared to, and that has come from a large uh, patient database. And it's compared with proton as well. Now, we do have some work on high-risk on high prostate cancer as well. And, but it still it is evolving, but intermediate and low risk group, SBRT may be a, a standard of care uh, along with surgery in majority of the patients. Now we talk about the, about the cost. There is a comparative study between cyber knife and tomotherapy in prostate cancer. If you see the direct and the indirect cost, means cost of staying and the loss of pay because, uh, because of the treatment, there is no difference in terms of outcome, and that we have published uh, recently and got uh, into, the, into the hospital management journal as well. Now, there is a very interesting, uh, interesting data about uh, the, the trends of SBRT in US. It has seen that in academic centers, they are treated with more with SBRT. Patients who are in urban populations are getting SBRT. White people are getting more SBRT than say, black people. And high income group people are getting, getting more SBRT than RP or, uh, or uh, IMRT. So there is a discrimination and people who are actually affluent, who are, have a racial superiority and financial superiority, they are getting SBRT compared to, so, uh, compared to uh, the IMRT and radical prostatectomy. So definitely there is a bias and, uh, and the bias is towards the SBRT and things. Unfortunately, it is our work in Amrita Institute, and we have seen that only 2% of our all SBRT are prostate. So that shows there is a significant bias in Indian patient populations, and majority of the patients do need SBRT, but they are not getting that treatment, and they are still treating with, with radical prostatectomy or IMRT. Now, we always talk that surgery is done by the surgeons and radiation is delivered by the machine. That is not true. So 
radiation is also delivered by the radiation oncologist. And unless until you contour properly, plan properly, the outcome is not going to be what we have shown there. So it has to be a high volume centers uh, with expertise to get the outcome that what you are seeing now. So we conclude that in biochemical uh, 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 failures at seven years is 95%. Late toxicities is 2.6% only, and GI toxicity is only 0.6%, and there is no randomized data, and it is onus for the surgeons to have a, have a randomized data between that. Till that, SBRT and uh, RP actually are both are an options. Now, if you see, at 10 years, toxicities are less than 2%, only one week treatment, no pain, outpatient procedure, what we, are we expecting anything better? So it is very difficult to reach you know, to improve after you reach the peak. And I think the SBRT has reached the peak and uh, giving uh, the treatment which is, so, so I think uh, it is very difficult to match uh, the data what we have shown. Thank you.